here's the thing these first lineups of defense as a as in, in currently in 2024 like japan and korea and ukraine do the people of these places not not the rulers the people do they have representatives in washington dc they don't why not they're the first line of defense against your supposed foe and these people are forced because they're your territory they're forced by your law they're forced to abide by your laws you know your enemy is their supposedly their enemy and your friend is supposed should be their friend that's you know what japan and south korea understand that they are absolutely at your mercy and they are you have an ambassador from each one of their country these countries territories with millions and millions of people living on them you have one ambassador ambassador from each one who is not you know represented representing the views and the perspective of the rulers but as we know none of those rulers are really democratic you know there are like three four five handful or two handful of Korean families who you know at, at any given time are in charge of the most important levers in South Korea you know South Koreans are like that Koreans are like that they're very family oriented and you know it's the family business you know politics is the family business for many of these countries so you see multiple generations move being in politics just like the Bushes it, this is eventually democracy what it comes down to the whole idea of a caste system seeps into democracy and you know becomes the political caste and the warrior caste and the peasant merchant caste and the peasant caste eventually you know all human societies fall back into that you know because you know you you teach the tools of the trade to your children and if you happen to be in politics you teach the tools of trade your 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 trade which is politics to your children so they have an advantage as opposed as compared to other people into getting in getting ahead in politics because they have learned the tool, tools of the trade from their family from an early age so my point is this it you're hearing from those few handful of families who rule japan rule south korea you hear their views from their amb ambassador but you don't hear the people's views do you hear the you know do you have a representative from okinawa in japan one of their main islands do you have a representative from okinawa in the house of representative in us no you don't so you don't know their views people of okinawa has been you know protesting for 75 years every sunday and they want you know their independence but you don't know that they don't want military base in their island of you know uncle sam's managers and you know but you don't know that it's not mentioned in the house of representative in uncle sam's land about this want of a from a people that you control you have a territory it has a large number of people yet they don't have a representative but you're controlling them it these two can in a democracy or this what you advocate is representation people who are being ruled have to have representation in the ruling body that rules them well japanese are being ruled by uncle sam's managers but they don't have a representation in the legislative body of uncle sam neither do koreans nor does any other territories that uncle sam has major military presence the dominant military presence so uncle has beside the 50 state uncle sam has at least another 100 countries that is has dominated and in control of and they all have to abide by the rules that uncle sam sets for them but their people don't have a say in the legislature of uncle sam they don't have a say in 
making the rules that they have to abide by. They don't have a say. People of Japan don't have a say. People of Ukraine don't have a say in the rules that they have to abide by. Who you hear is some guy who yesterday he was an actor, comedian, who used to shake his junk on the stage. And now you hear him in the House of Representatives. He's not the true representation representative of the people. He's not. They voted for him because, you know, some of them voted for him because, you know, he said A, but as soon as he got elected, he acted B. He proclaimed A, but he actually did B. And, you know, and now elections are, you know, canceled. So you actually don't hear what the people of Ukraine who are dying, you don't actually have their voice in your House of Representatives. Why is that? And is that logical? You say everybody has to be represented. You say people have to be represented. Ukraine is totally in your control, just like Japan, just like South Korea, just like uh, Chile, just like Argentina now, just like, you know, Panama and Nicaragua, just like, you know, Egypt and Israel, just like Spain and Norway and Sweden now, just like Turkey, all these NATO par partners, they're not partners, just like Australia, you know, you control them. Because you're the big brother in the group. They're, you're the, big, the guy with the big junk in the group. There are no allies in NATO. Everybody, you know, everybody has, has tied their string to Uncle Sam's business in NATO. You rule them. They're your territories. Do the people have representation? Because I tell you one thing, I mean, it's clear that if Ukrainians, for example, had real Ukrainian people, not their, you know, actor president, Ukrainian people had their real voices was heard in the House of Representatives in Uncle Sam's land, the real voices over there are saying that, eh, yeah, we want to somehow fucking live with this neighbor we have over here, Russia, you know, we want to be friends with them. We can only have independence if we are friends with this motherfucker, big Russia. We can only be friends with them, you know, because they're too big to pick a fight with them. We can only be friends with them if we consider their, if their concerns are our concerns. So, so let's be, let be it. That's the case with Mexico. Mexico can only be friends with Uncle Sam. If, if Mexico doesn't want to get their ass handed to them, they have to be friends with Uncle Sam because Uncle Sam is the bigger brother. So the only way Mexico can be friends, can continue living, is they if they are friends with Uncle Sam. And the only way they can be friends with Uncle Sam is that if their concern is the same concern as Uncle Sam's concern, period. If they're in their decision making, they consider Uncle Sam's concern. They don't put up a fucking, you know, Japanese, Chinese or Russian military base next to American border. If they do that, they're going to get their asses handed to them. It's the same thing with Ukraine. It's the same thing with Israel. I mean, if the real people who are living there, the brown people in West Asia, have voted. Their view is that, you know, we don't want these Europeans here. They may have belonged here 5,000 years ago, but, you know, we look at them, they're white. We are all here, we are all brown. It just, the color shows that they're out of place. The color tells, tells us that this is my land and European guys should go back to Russia because, you know, that fair skin shows where he belongs on the planet. In Northern Hemisphere or in the center of the 
spare. But you don't hear their concerns. You just don't. And you have media that, you know, they make up their own stories. It's, they're not concerned with what the people on the ground's concerns are. They make up their own stories. You know, they, or they, you know, they exaggerate the concerns of a very small group of people over there. As in, like, this is the main concern over there. Sort of like, no, it's not. 90% concern is bread. And 10%'s concern is, you know, they want to have whatever, they want to have a modern lifestyle or modern culture, and, but 90%'s concern is bread, but in your media, it seems like 90%'s concern is they want to, you know, have a, have a modern culture. And you feel that 90% of the concern of the people of Iraq is that they want to live a modern, live in a modern culture, modern society. But on the ground, if you actually had representatives from Iraqi people in the House of Representatives, you would have noticed that no, 90% of concern of people of Iraq is that they want, they need, they want to have bread to eat. And then they want to have some kind of sovereignty over the land. And if they don't, they at least want to have some kind of representative in sitting right next to you in the House of Representatives because they're your territory. Either they are your territory or they're not your territory. If they are your territory, you should have representatives of those lands in your presence, in your house, of in your legislative body. If they are not your territories, then what are you doing there? What, what are the military bases there for? You see where I'm going with this? It, it's, it's, a, it's very simple, really. And, you know, you, you're, you, you, you are upset with Elhan Omar that, you know, she, she, this bitch seems to be, seems to think that she's representing the people of Somalia. Why the fuck is she representing people of Somalia in a, in a House of Representatives in Uncle Sam's land? Well, how many military bases does Uncle Sam have in Somalia? How many times during the past decade Uncle Sam has bombed Somalia into with the objective of enforcing his will Uncle Sam's managers have bombed Somalia many times during the past two, three, four, five decades in order to enforce their will. You know, maybe their will was good or was bad, who knows? But in order to for enforce their will on the natives, they bombed them many times and they fought them many times. Okay, that means you want the territory of Somalia. Uncle Sam's managers want the ter territory of Somalia under their control. Fine. Can they have representatives in your house? You can't, you know, you can't say we want them under our control, but we don't want their representatives. Then that wouldn't be democracy. You keep screaming that we are a democracy, we are a democracy, we are a democracy, we are a democracy. Do, do all the people under your control, do they all have representation in your legislative body? Uncle Sam's managers control at least, you know, a couple of billion people. Planet Earth, eight and a half billion people. Uncle Sam's territory, at least in the territories that Uncle Sam control, at least there are one or two billion people do these people have representation in the legislative body of uncle sam no how what percentage of them have representation 250 million people 300 million people who are living in the uncle sam's land proper have representation that leaves like 1.8 billion 1.7 billion people 
don't have representation. Are you sure you're democracy? And what if they did? Wouldn't the system work much better? Wouldn't if if you knew the concern of Iraqi people, wouldn't you you know reevaluate your laws in order to address their concern too? So then maybe there would wouldn't be any shooting going on over there. You see, if the concerns of the people who are living on the land is not addressed, there is shooting involved. They shoot, you shoot, they shoot, you shoot. It fucking gets worse every day. But if their concerns are addressed, the shooting stops. How do they, the, their, their concerns are addressed? If they have a representation, would make sense, don't you think, Mrs. Greeny, that you should actually demand representation from Somalia sitting next to you in the U.S. House of Representatives, stating based on the fact that because we are in control of their destiny, we need the representative here next to us. That's only fair. If you're in control of their destiny, you must want to have their representative next to you. If you don't want to be in control of their, their destiny, then you empty your, your military bases and you throw throw back the key to them, you know, throw, throw the key back to them and say, good day. We don't want to control your territory. We don't. And we don't want your representative in our legislature. That's the only way the shooting stops. Two ways, two options. Either you accept representation from the people that you want to control, that are in your territories, that are in territories that you control with your military. Either you allow representation from the public, or you leave their land and you say we don't want this territory here's your territory here's your keys here's your house we got our own house and you don't accept their representative as a consequence but you cannot continue conquering more land but being appalled if there is ever any mention of any kind of representation from those lands you can't have it both ways. We want the land, but without the people. <laughs> we want the land without its people. I guess that's why, you know, Bill Gates is buying so much farmland. He wants the land. He's not very concerned about the people. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, that's one of the main allies in the Middle East, supposedly. The name of the country is Saudi Arabia. That means that this Arabia belongs to the Saud family. So their ambassador in Washington has always been from the Saud family. So you literally have only heard the views of one family for the past... 100 years, 200 years, well, however long that the British have, have has created Saudi Arabia from for World War I, after World War I. For over, over 110 years, you have only heard the views of the Saud family through their ambassador of such an important country. Have you ever had any representation from the people on the ground in Saudi Arabia? in your House of Representatives, in your Senate? Have you ever traveled there? Have anybody ever, you know, within the legislative body, have gone to Saudi Arabia on a trip, on a tour, alone? You know, because on a trip on, like that, everything is going to be 
covered up. So it's one of your main allies. Never heard the views of their public. Not many people, Americans in your position, ever go there, want to go there, care to go there, to hear from their public in person, supposedly. And so your 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 laws, which they have to abide by, is set by a group of people who have no representation from the Saudi Arabian people or the Jordanian people or the Egyptian people. There is no representation from them, only from a few families, the ruling class families in the Middle East. You have some kind of ambassador. So, can you, I mean, can this in any way be considered as just, democratic, right, logical, stable?